Okay, boys and girls, let's check out this perfect competition question. It's going to be a long one. So, mixed martial artists treat Muay Thai lessons and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu lessons as complementary goods. Because to beat the shit out of your opponent, you must fight while standing and on the ground as well. Street fighters treat them as gross substitutes because they believe to beat the shit out of your opponent, you must take him down fast with just one technique. So, Muay Thai lessons are sold in a perfectly competitive market. And the demand of the mixed martial artists is elastic and that of the street fighters is inelastic. Assume that the street fighters constitute a much smaller group of students than the mixed martial artists. Part A. Show the initial equilibrium in the market. Part B. What are the short run effects of an increase in the price of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu lessons on the equilibrium price and quantity of the Muay Thai lessons? on the spending on Muay Thai lessons from each of the group of students and what is the output and profit per Muay Thai school. And part C, what will happen to all these elements in the long run? So this is obviously a very long question and we have to break it down into several quickie pointers. So my first pointer would be that the mixed martial artists treat Muay Thai lessons and BJJ lessons as complementary goods. And the second pointer would be that the street fighters treat these two lessons as um, gross substitutes, right? So we know that the Muay Thai lessons, they're actually sold in a market that is perfectly competitive. And we also know that the demand of the mixed martial artists is elastic, and the demand from the street fighters is inelastic, and the street fighters are a much smaller group of consumers as compared to the mixed martial artists. So they want to see the initial equilibrium, and they want to see the short-run effects uh, from an increase in the price of the BJJ lessons on the equilibrium price and quantity of Muay Thai lessons. They also want to check out the spending on the Muay Thai lessons from each of the, the, the groups of students and they want to know what is the out, uh, output and profit of each Muay Thai school. And they also want to see what happens in the long run. So this is how we're going to summarize this question. All right. So let's um, take a look at all these squeaky pointers into detail. Okay, let's talk about the mixed martial artists first. We know that they are the first group of consumers, so I'm just going to write down uh, they are consumer group number one. And how do they treat Muay Thai and BJJ lessons? Okay, so we know that Muay Thai and BJJ lessons are actually the goods, and they are complementary, okay, in the view of the MMA fighters. When the demand for Muay Thai goes up, the demand for BJJ will go up. And when the demand for Muay Thai goes down, the demand for BJJ goes down. So, I mean, that's what it means by complements. So, for example, if the price of BJJ were to increase, the quantity demanded for it will definitely decrease. Why? Well, this is simply due to the law of demand, right? When something is more expensive, you want to buy less of it. So, what happens to the quantity demanded for Muay Thai lessons? Since they are complements, the MMA fighters will decrease their quantity demanded for Muay Thai lessons. Right? See? It's easy to apply. Now, let's check out the street fighters, which are the second group of uh, consumers. How are they going to treat Muay Thai lessons and BJJ lessons? Okay, They're going to treat them as substitutes, which means that when they increase uh, the demand for Muay Thai lessons, at the same time, they're going to decrease their demand for BJJ lessons. And of course, this works the other way around and vice versa as well. Okay, so let's see what happens when there's uh, maybe a decrease in the price of Muay Thai lessons. So this will cause an increase in the quantity demanded for Muay Thai lessons because, again, due to the law of demand. So what do you think happens to the quantity demanded for BJJ lessons? Well, obviously it's going to decrease because the street fighters treat them as substitutes, right? So let's take a look at the third one. We know that the Muay Thai lesson market, which is essentially good X, right, is actually perfectly competitive. And let's do a little recap on what it means by a perfect comp. So in perfect comp, P equals to MC at equilibrium. And the firms or the training schools, they are going to make zero profits in the initial as well as the long um, equilibrium, long run equilibrium. And they are, the firms are going to set the quantity produced based on the market price. So that is where P equals to MC come in. Now, let's take a look at the fourth quickie pointer. Now, the price elasticity of demand for the mixed martial artists is going to be elastic, so it's more than one. And for the street fighters, it's going to be inelastic. So since the street fighters are a smaller group than the MMAs, uh, this means that the overall market um, um, elasticity of demand is going to be more than one. 
And this also means that how the overall market demand changes depends on how the MMA consumers change their demand. So if the MMA were to increase the demand, then the total market demand will increase and of course the other way around as well. So let's look at the last squeaky pointer. The last squeaky pointer is basically a summary of what they want from us. So they want the initial equilibrium and they want to see the effects of an increase in the price of BJJ on the equilibrium price of Muay Thai, uh, oops, there's a little bit typo, uh, the equilibrium quantity produced for Muay Thai lessons, um, the spending on Muay Thai lessons of uh, both of these consumer groups, and they also want to know the um, profit of the uh, Muay Thai schools. So these, uh, we, are, we are required to actually come up with the short run and the long run effects. So these two things means that we need to have one market graph, and this over here means we need to have two consumer graphs, and the last one over here means that we need to have one firm graph. So this is how you determine how many graphs you need. You know, it's not by memorizing, oh, if this situation, then I've got this number of graphs. No, 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 okay? It's all about reasoning and uh, trying to deduce how many graphs you need, just like how I did just now. Thanks for watching a sample of the Quickonomics online learning experience. We hope you've enjoyed it. We believe that true happiness lies in realizing ambitions and dreams. That's why we make our products specific to your needs. Simple to understand and captivating, so that you can learn effectively while saving time, realizing those ambitions and dreams. The Quickonomics online learning experience is a range of supplementary lectures, tutorials, and exam solutions in the form of videos, which you can conveniently view anytime, anywhere. Watching our videos before and after your regular lessons at school, we aim to give you joy in learning and build academic confidence at the comfort of your own relaxed learning environment. So how can you begin? We welcome you to purchase Quickie Dollars to redeem the videos for full access to the Quickonomics online learning experience. Thank you for starting with Quickonomics.